everyone, it's Cheryl. Um, first off, I want to apologize to you. I know I've got a lot of stuff I've started and I haven't got back to it yet. And tonight's going to be no exception and it's for a special reason. Um, <laughs> my daughter, my oldest daughter Amanda, she lost her little dog a while back. Um, he was a little Westie named Jackson and he was the love of her life. Um, and she lost him. He got very, very sick with uh, autoimmune disease that uh, was genetic, I guess, or through the breeding or something like that. And anyway, she lost him. Well, she just announced on Facebook the other day, and any of you who follow me, you can go look, um, that Monday, she's in Memphis for a conference this weekend, and when she gets back Monday, she'll be stopping by Omaha and picking up a little dog that she's adopting. And he's eight weeks old. He is a Westie Schnauzer Cross. They call him a Wowser, which I think is a really cute name. He's a little black guy, and he is absolutely adorable. So, since this is such a happy occasion that we're getting a new puppy in the family, um... I decided that I want to make her a special little mini album for this, for the little puppy. So, yeah, she's very, very excited about it and extremely happy. And so I wanted to make her something kind of nice. Now, generally, I do not do full-size mini albums on here. Uh, because I kind of have my own way of doing it. And it's kind of different than most people do theirs. Uh, instead of going ahead and deciding how I want every page to be. I kind of do them as I go because I like them interactive and I definitely want this one interactive and I yeah I just kind of make it up as I go so I decided I would I would do this mini album on a, on a it, it will be an ongoing video I've only got till next weekend to get it done so yeah I need to get it going I just today drove up to Brookings where my daughters live and picked up some Bow Bunny Happy Tales paper, which will be most of the dog type paper I'm going to be using. I am having a hard time even finding paw print paper. It's crazy, but I was at Michael's and I couldn't find it. I was at Joanne's and I didn't find any. And I was there on Sunday, so Hobby Lobby was closed. But I'm sure if they have any, it's probably minimal. Uh, there aren't too many places around here who carry a lot of Bow Bunny paper. Um... I know I can get it at Joann's online. I can probably get it at Hobby Lobby online. However, we just found out about the puppy, was it earlier this week? She got it confirmed that the adoption and everything went through for the puppy. So, yeah, it was kind of last minute. And to order online, I would never have gotten it in time. So, I made a trip up there today to get the paper. So, that's what I'm going to be using on this. Mostly throwing in some other papers I have with it. Because, like I said, I'm having trouble finding dog related paper which is kind of crazy because everybody has dogs everybody loves their dogs and yeah I thought it was kind of weird anyway uh, I invite you to join me on probably the most bizarre <laughs> mini album process video you will ever see uh, but that's how I am and that's what I do and as I always say it is what it is so the first thing I am going to do is I am going to start out making well, okay, I've got my covers made. Um, what I did was glued a couple of pieces of, Hobby Lobby calls it chipboard, I call it pretty lightweight cardboard, because it's like your flimsy cereal boxes. So I glued two pieces of the, that together, and I haven't made the spine yet because I'm going to use the hidden hinge binding, and I don't like to do math, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it out for the size I want, and when I get done, I will cut my spine. <laughs> So there's my oddity number one. Usually I know exactly how big I want the spine and figure it all out, but I just, bleh. Finally got the water heater done. Yes. You don't know what it's like to not have to heat water for everything you want to do. Well, maybe some of you do. It's not fun. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut the two, I've cut four of these out and I glued them together. And they measure seven and one half by six. And six will be the vertical seven and a half long. 
So with that said, let's get a piece of black cardstock. I can't even think tonight. And what I'm going to do is, this is an 8.5 by 11 piece, and I am just going to cut it 6 inches. Like so. I cleaned off my crafting table. Yay, because now I actually have a little bit more room. Not that I have that much, but I have a little bit more. And I'm going to get out my scoreboard, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start scoring. Told you, not conventional. <laughs> There's nothing about me that's normal or ordinary. I guarantee that. Okay, so first of all, this is the Kathy Orta hinge, Hidden Hinge Binding. Mm, damn cold. Sorry. Uh, it's driving me crazy. And I think I want to leave about an inch and a quarter that's going to attach to my, in, my front and back cover. So first of all, I'm going to score at one and one quarter inches. And then I'm going to move over a quarter of an inch. Okay, this is probably odd to some of you because I'm going to leave a half an inch in between my pages, but I want that quarter inch in between my cover and my first page because normally I don't do a lot with either one of those, and then I really get going on my interactive. So my first score after that is going to be at a quarter, and now I'm going to start my half inches. So I'm going to score at two inches, two and a half. And that will be my first page. Now a half an inch in between, that will be at three inches. Three and a half. Oops, I'm going to move my paper there. And four. That's two pages now. I've got alcohol ink all over my hands because I was making a kind of goofy special ATC tonight. So, yeah, I just kind of did that for fun. So, I've got alcohol ink all over. I can't get it off. <laughs> Okay, so two pages. All right, now I'm going to score four and a half. That's my next space in between. Five. Five and a half. That will be three pages. Six. That's my next half inch in between. Six and a half. Seven. And that will be four pages. One. I get confused. Two, three, four. Seven and a half will be my next space in between my pages. Eight. Eight and a half. That will be my fifth page. Yeah, I'm sorry I keep going back and counting, but I get myself screwed up when I do this one. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> also, it's late at night, actually early in the morning. Space in between, and you know what, people? I'm going to run out of space when I go over here. It's going to happen. Okay, this will be my sixth page. And I'm going to end up with hardly any left over here, but I'm going to make this work. I should have went with one inch, and I would have had an inch left. But I didn't, but it still is going to work, okay? This is going to work, because I don't want to do this again, okay? All right, so I've got all my scores done. I think you can see that. I'm just going to start folding. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm turning the paper vertically, and I am going to fold this, fold the bottom edge, my one and a quarter inch here up. Let me get this out of here, so you don't need that. And then I'm going to take where my quarter inch mark is, and I'm also going to fold that upward, like so. Make sure I get that even. Crease it down with a bone folder, and that's not even. All right, that's good. Now, when I get to the first, for those of you who are not familiar with this binding system, and I know most of you probably are out there, but if you're not, then what I'm going to do next is where I have my first two half-inch lines, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold that backwards. Okay? And you'll see what I'm doing as I progress here. Okay, and I'm just going to burnish that down. No crafting kitty. Now, I'm going to take... So what I've got is I've got the one and a quarter folded upward. I've got the quarter folded upward. And now I have the half folded backward, as you can see there. I think you can see that. Okay. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to fold this half inch mark upward again. And by upward I mean it's going vertically up the way I turned my paper originally. Okay. And now I'm to the half inch between the pages and I'm also going to fold that upward. And I'm going to burnish that down. 
Okay. And now I've come to where my next page will be, and again, I am folding that backward. And I will show you this in a minute here. All right. I'm going to take that one that I just did, and I'm going to fold it up toward this end again. Okay. I want to keep working toward that end for right now. So as you can see now what I'm getting, and you see where those are sticking up like that? Those are going to be what holds my pages in. Crafting Kitty, you need to leave. I said no Crafting Kitty tonight. Thank you. Ugh. All right, now I'm up to my next space between my pages, and I fold that upward also toward this end. Burnish it down good. Okay, now I'm to the point. Again, now I've got my half inch space in between. I'm going to take the next two half inch folds, and I'm going to go backwards with that. Burnish that down. Straighten it out, and again, fold upward toward my top here. Burnish it down, get a nice fold on that. I'm at my half inch space. That also goes in the same direction. Ah, oh, don't think I got that folded quite even there. I don't know if I can work that out or not. Get the bone folder, that's what that's for, right? Right. Okay, that's better. And I am now up to where I need to fold backwards once again. Press it down. Fold that one upward. Because I'm at my half inch space in between my pages again. And I'm also going to be folding that one up toward this end. Okay, I have, this is the middle again of my page, so I know that I have to take the next two and fold them backwards. So that they can form the little piece here that's going to hold my pages in when I get there. And I'm going to crease that down again. I'm to my next half inch space, and I'm going to fold that also in the same direction. If I've done folding, and I am at my last two half inch marks. I'm going to fold them backwards. All right, now I'm up to the quarter inch and what should have been a little bit longer of a piece but wasn't, but it will work. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to turn it around the opposite direction and I need to take where that quarter inch score line is and fold that back this way. Back toward the way I started now that I flipped it around and I need to do that also with my last score line. They both need to go the opposite direction as of the other of the other end that I folded. Ugh. Oh heavens. All right, so now I hope you can see a little better. You can see I have ah uh, I have this accordion like deal kind of going with a half inch space in between. Each one of these is going to hold my page. Now you can use your double-sided sticky tape on this if you want, um, whatever you like. I happen to like glue on my albums best, um, so I'm just going to be gluing mine together. And uh, if I can get the glue to come out, I'm getting a little on tacky glue. Tacky glue is like my favorite glue for any of you who are new. Um, love my tacky glue. And what I'm doing is I'm just applying it. You don't want to apply it to the end, and you don't want to apply it to the little quarter inch I left there, um, or half inch, whatever whatever size you decide to use. You don't want to apply it to that. But you want to apply it to one side, and you would do the same with your sticky tape, to one side of the half inch fold. And I'll show you in just a minute here once I get this. I like to just press it firmly together. Make sure I've got it so that your half inch fold will look like that. And I've got some bad lighting going on tonight. I apologize for that. Um, I don't know what's with it tonight. My fluorescent seems awfully bright over there. And my room lights seem awfully dim, so whatever. So I want to make sure that these get stuck together nice and tight because I don't want them coming open. I'm just still just applying the tacky glue to one side and then squeezing those together. There we go. 
that one. And, uh, I know with it folding over on me right now, you can't see what I'm doing, but as I said, I will show you it once I get it all glued together. I just have a couple of these left. will be going next weekend. Not this weekend because like I said my daughter's in Memphis this weekend but uh, but I think it's going to be next weekend when we'll get together and celebrate Easter with the kids and uh, go get get to meet the new puppy. So that will be fun and it will be exciting. I'm looking forward to it because he is I can't wait to see him. He's just the cutest little thing ever. And they are going to name him Phineas Jackson. Uh, Phineas, because she obviously likes the name Phineas, her and her husband. And Jackson, in honor of the little Westie, she just lost. His name was Jackson. And uh, so, and they're going to call him Finn, which I think is really cute. Okay, so now, with my folds in and everything, I hope you can see what I have here. And these will be what holds the pages into my mini album. What I'm going to go ahead and do right now, too, while I'm at it, is it, if you take and you cut the ends of your piece at a diagonal. Ah, not sure. I'm not very good. Things are my way. Can you see how that's cut at a diagonal here? Okay, let me, maybe I can zoom in just a little closer. Okay, when you do that, that just makes it easier to get your pages down on, on, onto this. Um, boy, I can't talk tonight. Wake up, Cheryl. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do that with each of them. And you don't have to cut a real, you know, real big angle in it, but just enough. And this really does help slip your pages over the ends of your of your little binding here. I can't even see the line on that one. It's kind of nasty glare going off this light, so... Kind of guessing here, flying blind. Okay. All right, so now that is what I have, and I have all of my little edges angled. I don't know if you can see that, but I do. Take my word for it. I am an honest person. Okay, so now that I have this, now I will be able to measure this to find out exactly how big I need to make my spine. I'm sorry about that. Three inches, which I would have guessed anyway. And you know what, guys? I'm not going to have enough here to double this up. And I'm betting I don't have any more. Let me check. I have some chipboard over here beside me somewhere. Hmm. I know I did. I just saw it not that long ago. I was cleaning up in here. I found some scraps of chipboard that were... Well, of course, you never want to throw anything out, but I found some that were really a good size to use, and... Aha, I found them. All right. See, I knew I had them. Okay, so I already have this one measured out to six inches. As you can see on my cutting, well, you probably can't see in there, but I do. I have it measured out to six inches, and I'm going to want to now cut it at three inches so that my spine of my book will be three inches long. Um, oh, I have the right one in. Okay. All right. I know most people do not cut chipboard with these, but... I've got two rotary cutters. One of them I cannot get to cut straight for anything. It's a really good cutter, but it won't cut straight. And the other one, uh, I don't know, it's an older one of the, uh, this brand, I believe it's Fiskars, yep. And I cannot get the thing to cut. There's some wrong. I got it for $5 at a thrift store. I thought, wow, what a bargain. But it just does not want to cut right either. Um. And that edge does not seem very straight to me. That edge does not seem very good. What are we doing here? Okay. All right, that seems pretty even. So we'll put three inches there, and I just want to make sure that this is even because something's looking really off here to me. Yeah, that one's okay. Maybe it's this one that's off. Maybe that's it. Six inches. Yep, this one's the one that's just a little off, and of course this thing isn't going to cut it. Let's take a 
plastic scissors and just trim it just a bit. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get rid of all of these pieces here. And I'm just going to put them over there for now and I'm going to move this. It's so weird having some room over there beside me because I never have room. And I once again, I'm just going to use my glue to stick these together. Now I know this is three inch spine looks pretty chunky and it is, but I like to give myself a lot of room in case I want to embellish or I want to make some pockets that, you know, like some accordion pockets, stuff like that. And like I said, I promise you people, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this yet. It will develop as it goes. Like I said, probably the strangest process video you are ever going to see on a mini album. So we're going to do it Cheryl style, which is kind of unique and different. Okay, so now I have my spine and I have my two covers. Okay, just make sure that everything is cut good and straight. I'm going to be eyeballing this to line it up. And I brought some duct tape in here because I don't have any Tyvek. And Tyvek is what a lot of your postal envelopes are made out of. Um, very, very sturdy stuff. But I do not have Tyvek, so we're going to play with duct tape, which could be another one of my disasters. Those of you who have been with me for a while or from the start, you know I have disasters quite often. Ah, get out there. Not uncommon to watch me make a disaster. But I do leave them all in. I can usually fix them. Once in a while I end up starting over. Ugh. Not a fan of duct tape. But that's all I got. So what I'm going to do now is on my spine I'm just going to take the duct tape. And I did not leave myself very much room there on the end to turn it over. But this is just so that the spine will not crack as time goes on because I do not, you know, I want this album to last and so I want to make sure that my spine is reinforced with something and that something is going to be duct tape and that was a bad cut. Oh, ah, darn, it's a new roll and that was pretty tough. I haven't decided exactly what I want to put on the spine of this book yet, but I've got some Tim Holtz grunge paper, and I really like that stuff, so I'm thinking that might just might just be what we're going to put on it. And I have to get this up. Ah, there we go. And what I'm thinking about putting on the front of it, I think would be really cool, is I've seen uh, Amy and Mamie Made It talk about this stuff a lot. Um, and it is a, a laminated burlap. I am. I have been so wanting to try this, and I think I might try using this on the cover of this little book for the puppy. So we will see. I've never used it before. Could be another disaster too. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to guess. And what? I, oh, really? God, this isn't even crafting kitty this time. It's just me dropping stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball this. Now I want to leave about an eighth of an inch in between my cover and my spine. All right. Crazy lady eyeballing something like this. Hopefully I will get it halfway straight. That's looking pretty good actually. Wow. I'm amazed even myself. Now I don't have a lot of tape on this end so I may add one more piece and this really is not going to hurt once the spine goes on. Um, especially with if I use the grunge paper which I'm thinking about using because the grunge paper by itself is pretty it's it's pretty thick so if you've never used it it's got a really funky smell and it's awesome I love this stuff but I'm a pretty big Tim Holtz fan so and this is not gonna quite be like I wanted either but the grunge paper will keep well it, 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 it will hide any bulk that I have because that's just the nature of the stuff Okay, and now I want to get this one on, and I'm going to turn it around because I'm right-handed, so I like to line up with my right hand. And once again, I am going for that eighth of an inch. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put it down. Then I'm going to just take this tape, and I'm just going to pull it over to the inside because this will all be covered. So it's not going to matter. 
not in the least. We're going to cover all this up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to push my tape down into this little eighth inch crease I have here. Okay, and that's going to make folding it a lot easier if I push that down. And I can push a little harder with the duct tape, but when we get to the paper, we don't, we're not going to want to push that hard at all. Okay, so now you see I can fold that up and I've got a good start on my cover uh, for this. And then, of course, when we get to it, our spine will glue right in here and it should just fit, which it does. Wow. And now it's the moment of truth um, to cover this. I've never used this stuff. Amy, Mamie made it, loves the stuff. Uh, she says it works awesome, so I'm going to, this is just the laminated burlap, so I'm going to have to glue this on. She says this is really easy to use, really neat stuff, so, and as you can see, it's, it's got a laminated finish on the back of it, so it doesn't really fray. You can get it to, I guess, but it takes a bit of doing. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do now is I'm just going to want to measure this. And I'm not going to worry. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up probably right just a little before my bend here. As you can see, it's probably hard with the black, but I'm going to leave it like maybe about, not quite a half an inch away from, from the fold of my book on my spine because I will be putting the, uh, the grunge paper over the top of that anyway. So this the edge... The half, the half inch that I leave up here will be covered when we get to that. So I'm not sure what's the best way to put this on. I brought some double-sided sticky tape, and I may I may go ahead and use that. Um, I'm going to want to cut a little bit of this away. So I'm hoping I can cut this with my cutter, or I'm going to have to measure it out the old-fashioned way with a ruler. We'll see what happens. This may be a disaster. It may not. I never tried this. So since my cover is seven and a half long, I know that I'm going to want this piece eight inches long because I I'm going. I want to leave a half an inch. Um, if I was, I'm going to have to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to want to leave a half an inch, half an inch more to this side. Actually, seven and a half would work because I'm going to leave this. Okay. Okay. All right. So we need this seven and a half. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut the whole length of this. I'm betting this isn't going to work. Oh no! Uh, but I do have I do have a line here that I can see where I need to cut with my scissors. So I'm just going to fold that over, and I'm just going to begin cutting and try to do as straight of a job as I possibly can with my scissors. Just cutting that off. Well, at least it makes kind of a score line with the cutter for me, so. All right. Now, I know that my book is six inches. I know it is six inches this way. Oops. This way. So I'm going to want to cut seven inches because I'm going to want to leave a half an inch overlap on each side. So I'm going to basically have a seven and a half by seven rectangle. Okay. And did I get it this time? Yep, I did. Okay. I have my little... Shows me at least on where I, where to fold so I can cut. So, And I could have just went ahead and left this little piece on, and I should have, and I probably will for the next cover. But for right now, I cut it off. I started cutting before I even thought about it. See how I am. All right. Okay, so this is going to fit onto my book about like so. And I've got about a half an inch on either side, and I ended up way long on this side. Huh. All right, well, I guess we're going to waste a little bit here in the interest of learning how to do this. I will still find a use for these little burlap strips. I will, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. These are not the best scissors, but they're better than my old purple ones that I usually use. I think I'm going to have to throw those out. They have been with me a long time, and they have cut a lot of stuff. So, All right, so that should work for that. 
It looks like about a half an inch on each side. I have this to overlap to cover my book. So I think I'm going to go ahead and lay one of these down. I, I have never worked with this stuff, so for me, a little of this is just the learning process of how is this going to work for me. And I think since it is the burlap, I am going to lay my tape down on my cover. Because I'm not really sure how, this, how well this is going to stick to the burlap. So we'll just lay this down on the cover. Come on. Let go. And I'm going to do it on both of my long edges and my shorter edge. And we'll see how this goes. Now, before I do that, what I want to do, and this is going to be tricky because I don't have it stuck down. Uh, maybe I should, I think I'm going to run a piece of this tape just, just enough to kind of hold it down. Something about like that should work. Come off of there. Come on, peel. Be nice. Always burnish your tape down. It works much better. There we go. Got that off. Okay, and I'm doing that just so I'll have something that will hopefully grab onto this burlap so that I can make my cuts for my corners. Okay. All right. Yep, it's going to hold it. I think it'll hold it enough. All right, now when you cut your corners, if you've never done this before, what you want to do is you don't want to cut right to the point of your corner. You want to leave, you want to cut it a diagonal and leave a little bit, like about an eighth of an inch there. Okay? That's going to make us, hopefully, a nice, even mitered corner if I do it right. If I don't do it right, I'm going to have a bad looking corner. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the other corner, making sure I leave that little, about an eighth of an inch in there between my book and the corner. I don't know if you can see that, but I do have a little, like an eighth of an inch in there between that. So. And I think I'm, I don't know if I want to run another layer of tape there bah, or not. Anyway, all right, what did I say about always burnish down your tape, get it stuck to your covers good. See, this is probably why I don't do mini album tutorials on here or process videos, which is what this is going to be, hopefully. Let's put it this way. If it all goes really, really bad, I don't know what I'm going to do. All right. So now I'm just kind of, since this isn't paper, there's really not much in the way of working it up. If it was paper, you know, we'd, we'd fold it or we'd score beside it and we'd kind of work it over so we didn't, you know, so the paper didn't crack on us. But since this is burlap, we're just going to have to bring it up and make sure we have it nice and tight and pull it down. Okay. And it looks like the double-sided tape is holding pretty well. This is... Some stuff I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think it was like $2.99 a roll, which wasn't bad, but you don't get a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to be going online and ordering some some of the bigger rolls on there. Oh, come on. I, my fingernails all broke, and now I can't get this up. And, you know, I've tried the hobby knives and the pokey tools and all that stuff. I do not have any luck pulling up tape with those. So... Ugh. And this is really sticking. It even sticks to the backing. So it's it's a good sticky tape. It's just you don't get very much on the roll for $2.99. Alright, and once again I'm just gonna pull this up and I'm just gonna start on one end with this. Just make sure I get a nice tight fold on there and get it laid down as flat as possible, especially since I'm working with burlap. Okay, now these could be a little more tricky because we leave these here so that we can poke the corners in. However, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that with the burlap. It doesn't seem to want to perform quite the way our paper or our cardstock would. Um, I have no way to keep it folded in once it's, you know, once I poke it in on the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to poke it with my finger, start on this side and pull it down over. And I'm ending up with a funky little end on there, but I think I'll be able to fix that. So it's not so bad. 
Um, again, I think I'm just going to have to do that with this side too because the burlap does not work the same as our papers and our cardstocks do. All right, well, so that's that, and I'm just going to trim a couple little fuzzies on that end. And one little bit there that's sticking out. And that's not too bad, as you can see. Not too bad. They might be a little pointy, but due to the burlap, I don't know what else can be done about that. Okay, so we know that worked well, and I now know that I need 7.5 by probably... I think I'm going to measure this one because I know that I need... I know the 7.5... Okay, let's just get the ruler the right way. Okay, it's 7.5. I'm going to want a half an inch. No, I'm going to want 7.5 because I'm leaving a half inch. That's right. Okay, and then I'm going to want it by... Seven because so it'll be another seven and a half by seven on this one, and I still have a sheet of burlap left over. Cool. All right, once again, since I don't have any other means to cut this, and I don't want to go through measuring it out, what I'm going to do is the same as I did last time, and go seven and a half. And this is an old blade I have in here too, so because I wasn't going to use one of my new ones. Over that a few times. Gives me my little. As you can see, it kind of does this little thing on here. See that? So then I know where to fold it and cut it. And I just cut on my fold when I'm ready to go. Okay. That aside. This is our seven and a no, that's not our seven and a half side. This is our seven and a half side. Double check, make sure it's all real good. All right, now I need seven. And I am doing this on the laminated side. Well, that almost cut through actually. So all I have to do is just go right along there, cut it. This blade is definitely probably not going to be any good when I'm done with it, but it has served its purpose. It's cut a lot of stuff. So. All right, once again, I'm just going to put this under here, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it because I know that I want about a half an inch on there. And see, this one I cut better. This one I came out with less out here to trim off. So I'll try to get that lined up about as even as I can. Take a piece of tape back here to just hold it. Come on. Oh, please. Just peel for me. For those of you who don't know me, there's sometimes I talk to whatever I'm doing. Ah, crafting kitty is going to bed. Huh. I'm amazed because usually she's up here helping me too much. Okay, so I just want to get this lined up. Like, that looks about even, and push that down so that holds it. Again, I'm going to go around all of my outside edges with the score tape. Kind of my paper cutter in the way. I have more room. I don't have enough room on here after I cleaned it up, but I do have more room than I had. Okay, and one piece down on this side, along the edge. Take that off there. Bone folder. You can use your finger, but I like to use a bone folder on it just to make sure I get a good, even surface pushing down on my tape. Okay, so now we need to take our scissors, and again, we need to attempt to leave that little eighth of an inch, although it really didn't work very well last time, and it really didn't matter so much, but I'm going to try it again with this one. When you're doing this with paper and cardstock, this is a must, because that's the only way you're going to get those nice little mitered corners. All right, 
So, I just need to get this peeled up here. Come on. I've got it started. I wish my fingernails would grow, but they've been breaking off lately like crazy. So, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to peel all the backing right now off my tape. Okay, so once again, I am ready to pull this up and I'm going to pull it nice and snug. And my tape is wider than this time than what I left on the edges. But that's okay because it will all be covered up when I put the inside mats in for this. Okay, I'm going to turn it around because I'm right-handed. Once again, I'm going to pull this up as tight as I can get it. Push it down. Ah, get my hand stuck in it, of course, or it wouldn't be me. Okay. Now I'm going to try these corners again. I'm going to try to do it the right way, but burlap is bulky, so it's really hard to say. And what I'm doing is I'm having to hold that down with my thumb, that little corner, while I'm turning it. Not exactly the most fun thing in the world, but I'm hoping it will work and I will get nice mitered corners this time. I won't have to cut any little fuzzy ends off or anything, hopefully. Now yep, that one looks like I got a little piece that I'm going to have to cut off. Okay, all right. So that's my other corner on there, and I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stop the video right here because I'm gonna want to uh, cut and probably decorate or paint or something on my grunge paper, ink it up or something before I put it on here. But so far we have our album. We have the spine, the two front and back cover. We have the burlap on the front and back cover. And I think we're going to call that good tonight. Um, so I'm going to probably just thank you all very, very much for joining me. Um, thank you for being understanding about my not getting to those other projects that I've got waiting or have been started and haven't gotten back to yet. Um, I'm getting back to them, I promise you. This was just kind of something really special, and I don't have a lot of time to do it. So I hope you all understand. Um, anyway, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Sorry I'm a little spacey. It's a little late, but I can't sleep. And obviously, I can't think. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you all. And uh, I hope I will see you back for, excuse that noise, I hope I will see you back for part two of this. I hope you all have a very, very good day since it's after midnight. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.